Hello everyone, Ambassador Larry Huggins here from Barcelona, Spain, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, for all of our friends who are usually used to watching this live, it's about 2 a.m. in California. I'm pre-recording this. Actually, I'm live right now, but as you know, Facebook does automatically record live stream broadcasts, so it will be played all day today, tomorrow, and until uh, Jesus comes back or I decide to take it down. So uh, go ahead and leave your comments because I will read them later. Uh, Mrs. Huggins and I have an important engagement to go to. It's not very often that we, uh, that we don't do our live broadcast. So actually we are doing it. We're just doing it at a little different time. Let me adjust my seating here a little bit. Um, how about right there? That'll do. Okay, again, oh look, <laughs> good morning to you. That's, uh, that's great. Good to see you on there. Now I have a hard time reading comments and broadcasting at the same time because I'm multitasking here. So if I don't read every one of the context, but, uh, uh, Judy, God bless you this morning. Uh, and you said, uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, that's great. Praise the Lord. All right, everybody. Again, um, starting a little late today, but uh, it's going to be a great show. And I uh, want to just pray for you before we get started. You ready? Oh, by the way, we will have communion as usual. So um, if you don't have it already, get your little communion elements ready. Today, I have, <laughs> of all things, I have a piece of a corn tortilla, no beg your pardon, flour tortilla, and uh, a little bit of juice. So it changes from day to day, depending on what we have. But the main thing is that after we Bless it, it's going to be consecrated to you and it's going to become healing and joy and deliverance in your heart. So let's do communion together today. Praise God. All right, we'll pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for blessing everyone who's joining me with this broadcast live and uh, recorded. It's still the same, same good word, uh, same insight, same inspiration, same anointing. And I pray that everyone receive a blessing this day that will serve them the rest of their days on this earth in Jesus name. Amen. Well, listen, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be putting my, on my glasses from time to time so that I can read old joke. I wear these for appearance. The words appear more clear when I'm wearing them. Old joke, right? Well, listen, I'm going to actually, I am going to start with a little joke because we're talking about prayer today. And this is, uh, this is our uh, Winds of Change series, 24 episodes altogether. Now, the last episode, last Sunday, was during our 33-hour marathon, share live broadcast. And I'll tell you, I think I'm once and done on that. That was exhausting. Three all-nighters in a row, but it was so much fun and uh, wonderful comments. We had a lot of people watch it. And so it was great. We had a great communion service last day. I got a lot of comments about that. So we've taken down the 33 hours off of Facebook, and put them in our archives, but we are reposting uh, Sister Loretta's uh, teaching from last Sunday, which was part of our Winds of Change, even though it was inside of the, uh, of the marathon. It's, uh, we've lifted that out, and that was our live stream last week. Great teaching. In fact, uh, two of our Dear, dear friends from many, many years back, uh, who've also been our partners, uh, watched the whole thing. They said they watched all but two hours, I think, and they had us on in every room in the house. We were on their iPhone, their iPads, their television, so no matter where they went in their house, here we were. And they said it was just like being here with you. Well, almost. Uh, TV and internet never replaces being there in person, but thank God for TV and internet, right? So this couple said that what Sister Loretta shared was so clear and it uh, reminded them so much of what was left to get out of the book of Romans that they started digging into Romans with uh, fresh eyes and, and a new way of looking at things. They have been in the Word for many, many years, almost as long as I have, and yet they got something new and inspiring from Sister Loretta's teaching. You will too. So you'll want to look for that. It, it may be posted now. I haven't checked, but uh, if, if not, it'll be posted very shortly and you can watch it. All right. Here's my joke. Uh, this little, uh, this little Catholic boy was praying to God. And he said, God, uh, please give me a new bicycle. 
And he thought about it for a while and he said, well, I haven't really been good enough. Uh, so uh, uh, he made a little bargain. He said, God, if you will be, uh, if you'll give me a bicycle, I'll obey everything my mom and dad says. And he thought about that and he thought that's probably not going to happen. And he said, if, if, if you give me your, uh, a bicycle, I'll be nice to my sister. And he thought about that and he thought, man, it's probably not going to work. So he goes and gets the little statue of Mary and he goes to the basement. He hides it. He hides it where it's tucked away. And he goes back to praying. He said, God, if you ever want to see your mama again, you better give me that bicycle. <laughs> I know it's a corny joke. It's probably going to upset some people, but it's all in good fun. So lighten up a little bit. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay, we're going to talk about prayer. We're going to talk in particular about in Christ praying. Remember that, in Christ praying. There's all kinds of different prayers that we can pray. There's a prayer of intercession, prayer of supplication, prayer of thanksgiving, intercessory prayer, even travailing prayer, and the prayer of agreement, the prayer of faith, and so forth. We uh, we teachers and uh, we students of the Bible love to uh, kind of break things down into different categories and give them names. So, you know, we've given all these different names and categories to praying, but there are distinctions of prayer. You know, Jesus uh, was all night in prayer on more than one occasion. He'd go out into the wilderness and just he and his father and the Holy Spirit and pray. And so he was one for importunity in prayer. But on the other hand, a lot of his prayers were very short. Uh, in fact, sometimes they were just like uh, uh, decrees or assertions, you know, take up your bed and walk. It's more of a commandment than a prayer. He did pray kind of a, a longish prayer for Lazarus. He said, Lord, I thank you that you always hear me, but I'm praying aloud for these people's sake. And then he, uh, after he had the stone rolled away, he, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And here came Lazarus. So it was really a very brief prayer. Oral Roberts always prayed brief prayers. And of course, he was a man of miracles and he did great things for God. He, he, uh, he was a worldwide evangelist. He was uh, one of the pioneer television ministers and he built the City of Faith and he built uh, Oral Roberts University and many other things. And he prayed, uh, characteristically brief prayers. In fact, I'll quote him. He said, people who pray long prayers usually don't have any power. And Jesus talked about people who use repetition, you know, don't be as a heathen who think through their much repetition, they're going to get their prayers answered. And so we're going to talk a little bit about, <clears throat> pardon me, a little bit about prayer. Let me wet my whistle here. And I want to start with the uh, uh, men and women of God who prayed for me, and then I'm going to get into the word, but I want to testify a little bit. I've been in a unique situation all of my adult life to be acquainted with Many, many men and women of God, uh, great women of God, some of the, some of the greatest of my generation I have been acquainted with. I'm going to save Dr. Lester Summerall for last in this, in this litany of names, but I'll, I'll start with Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts has prayed for me more than once, laid his hands upon me. He and Evelyn both have prayed for me and blessed me and what a blessing it was. And uh, my mentor, Dr. John Evanzini, has prayed for me more than once and laid his hands on me. And, you know, he's got a revelation of biblical economics that's astounding. He, he was one of the greatest voices of the 20th and this part of the 21st century in the area of biblical economics, a real expert. He raised over a billion dollars for TBN alone, plus paid off Bible schools, paid off churches, paid off orphanages, supported ministry, did so many great things for the kingdom because he had a revelation of Christ, uh, of, of the uh, uh, substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. You know, Jesus was rich and he became poor so that we through his poverty might be rich. Well, Dr. John is my mentor and he laid his hands on me more than once, but on one occasion he said, uh, Heavenly Father, let this grace that's upon me come upon Larry Huggins. Wow, what a great prayer. And Dick Brunell, one of my dearest friends on earth, we've been, a, we've been friends since uh, dirt was new, so to speak. And he's got a, a real gift for uh, being debt-free, for debt forgiveness and debt release, being out of debt and prospering. And he has blessed so many people and so many great testimonies. In fact, Benny Hinn just last year credited Pastor Dick's prayers of having uh, rescued his ministry financially. So 
And, and Benny Hinn just, he had him on the program and Pastor Dick prayed for him and Benny Hinn just played that over and over and over. Well, Dick has prayed for me many times, but uh, recently he laid his hands on me and he prayed for $5 million to come into our ministry. Wow, I believe it and I'm here to receive it. So uh, it's going to happen. And when it does, you'll know about it because <laughs> I'll give uh, I'll give credit to Pastor Dick and give all the glory to God. Amen. So thank God for those prayers. Now let me go back and talk about some people you don't know. Lily Vanderpool was the first Pentecostal uh, relationship I ever had in my life. A wonderful, wonderful lady from up in the Ozarks, the the uh, daughter of a preacher, of a pioneer preacher, we called him Uncle Dan. I didn't know him, but I knew all of his offspring and went to the church he founded. It was in a log house, one room log house. It was covered with tar paper and it, and it uh, was rickety. It kind of moved around when we walked, but man, we had some great meetings there. And Sister Lily was a spiritual mother to me. She was a great woman, almost six foot tall and very statuesque and strong. I mean, she was a true prayer warrior and intercessor. And out of the old mold, you know, Pentecostal, no makeup, her hair piled up in a big bun, and she always very modest in her dress. And and every time I'd go see her, first thing we'd do is pray. She'd say, come on in, we'd get on her knees and pray up a storm. And then afterwards, we'd talk about the Bible and fellowship. And then before I left, we'd pray again. And that's how she was. And she has prayed for me all of her life. She's been my number one intercessor. Praise God for Lily Vanderpool. When I get to heaven, I'll find out that she's going to be uh, in the line ahead of me reaping rewards that that I was taking credit for, but they really uh, probably wouldn't have happened without Lily's prayers. And a couple of more people from up there in, in that region of Arkansas. Uh, I'm a Texas boy, but that's where I went to get filled with the Holy Ghost and to get grounded in uh, spiritual things uh, and... Uh, Brother Lester Chisholm prayed for me more than once. And his father, I call him Uncle Tommy. Tommy prayed for me often and, and other people up in that area. In fact, there were people who still pray for me in, uh, in that region. One of my dear friends, Terrell Brashear, first time I met him was at a memorial service at a cemetery out in the woods, uh, what we called a decoration, uh, meeting. Uh, we would, uh, collect a little money, would have dinner on the grounds and singing, pass the hat and get enough money to pay someone to, to mow the grass and keep the headstones uh, standing upright and say some prayers. And it was a great, always great. We always had uh, fried chicken and all that kind of stuff. And Brother Lester was playing his, his uh, banjo and there was a young man there playing the upright acoustic bass. This is just out, you know, outdoors under a big tree next to a creek uh, in a cemetery of all places. I'd never seen this young man before, but he's playing this beautifully uh, upright acoustic bass and singing with Brother Lester. And afterwards, this fellow came right up to me, just a young, good-looking, fresh-faced guy, and he put his nose almost on the end of my nose. And he said, uh, in, in this Arkansas twang, he said, uh, do you believe Jesus had an inner circle? And I thought about it, and I, I said, yes, I believe he did. And he said, yep, he did, and you're in it. <laughs> and that man became a lifelong friend. Brother Terrell Bashir still prays for me. So thank God for people who've blessed me and prayed for me. I feel their prayers even to this day. You know, there's not a shelf life on prayer. So you need to thank God for all the people who've prayed for you, laid hands on you, and blessed you because their prayers are still before the Father. And as I said, there's no shelf life. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And so moving along, uh, Kenneth E. Hagan, I worked for him for four and a half years, and he prayed for me on more than one occasion under tremendous anointings as well. And Brother Hagan had a lot of friends who passed through Tulsa doing camp meetings, so I've been prayed for by Kenneth Copeland, by Jerry Savelle, by Norval Hayes, by uh, Frederick Casey Price, uh, people that you don't know, Stanley Rankin, uh, Joe Jordan, uh, uh, Billy Bram, you probably know about her. Everybody knows about Billy Bram and Prayer Mountain in Arkansas. And uh, uh, mm, let me see, uh, just hundreds of people are crowding into my mind right now, and I won't do it, uh, all of them justice. But uh, I have to tell you that it's sweet knowing that some of the greatest men and women of my generation have laid their hands on me and prayed for me. In fact, every time I've had the privilege of being around people of faith, people who have a demonstrable anointing and a real solid ministry, 
tell you the truth, I don't let flaky people pray for me, and you'd be well advised to do the same. Make sure people love you before you ask them to pray for you, because faith worketh by love. And if they don't love you, they won't pray a real real sincere prayer. So uh, make sure people love you. That's important. You want people of love, Jesus people laying hands on you. Amen. So uh, just just something I've learned it by experience. Uh, don't let flaky people lay hands on you. They may impart the wrong thing to you. I don't know. I don't want to take any chances. How about you? So uh, I always ask good, rock solid, bona fide people who love you to pray for you, and and their prayers will avail much. The Bible says that Elisha was a man with the same passions as we. And he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And it didn't rain for three years, and it rained again in his word. Uh, one translation says, The heartfelt fervent prayer of a righteous man makes a tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working. I like that, heartfelt fervent prayer. So there, there is a time when we have fervency in prayer. There are times when we just pray the simple prayer of agreement, and uh, we always agree on the scripture, not on the outcome. The outcome is automatic if the promise is fulfilled. So, so many people say, agree for me for uh, uh, healing. Well, okay, but what are we agreeing to? How about First Peter 2, 24? We'll agree that that is true concerning you. And the manifestation of that promise, the fulfillment of that promise will result in healing. So let's, uh, it's a very subtle difference, but so many people say, agree for me, I get a new car. Agree for me that, you know, I'll go on a vacation. Agree for me for my kids to come back to the Lord. And uh, it all, I always try to pull them back to a scripture that we can agree upon because we're talking about something that is, has to do with our covenant and the word of God. So let's agree on the promise that addresses the thing you're asking. And when that promise is fulfilled, then your desire will manifest. So I hope you understand what I'm saying there. Think about it and you'll get it. Well, that's for another lesson, another day. But there are all kinds of prayer. Now for Dr. Lester Summerall, he was one of the greats who laid hands on me. And I'll talk about someone who was in his life. Dr. Summerall went around the world with Howard Carter, one of the pioneers of the Pentecostal movement who went all the way back to Azusa Street, really were, were the beginnings of the origin of his ministry, as they were for so many. Azusa Street spread around the world. And this wonderful Englishman named Howard Carter was in the United States ministering. And he and Dr. Summerall got hooked up in the spirit. It was supernatural, and they traveled around the world together. And on this round-the-world trip where they went to New Zealand and Australia and Singapore and Hong Kong and and through China during the days when the revolution was going on and Mao Zedong was out running around and Dr. Summerall was was arrested for a while by these uh, by these revolutionaries and got away with uh, without being killed, <laughs> went to Tibet and also went to Russia and went all the way across Russia from the east to the west. And this is during the time of Stalin, right before World War II. It was very much pioneer, uh, point of the spirit type of ministry. I love Dr. Summerall. And he ended up in the UK. And at a preacher's meeting, he met someone who was kind of... Uh, uh, neglected by other preachers. He was an older gentleman by the name of Smith Wigglesworth. Yes, the great Smith Wigglesworth himself. As he got older, uh, people stopped uh, celebrating him. I, some things don't change, you know. Uh, but uh, Dr. Dr. Summerall uh, enjoyed so much meeting Smith Wigglesworth and became a dear friend. He went to his home over and over, and Dr. Uh, and Smith Wigglesworth would read the Bible to him and, and teach him things, and they became fast friends. And then, and then World War II was brewing, and the UK revoked visas on all foreigners because they were, didn't want them in the country should war break out. So Dr. Summerall had to return to the United States, and he made his last visit to Smith Wigglesworth. You know, over 13, 13 people, I believe is the number, people were raised from the dead by Smith Wigglesworth. If you read his biography, 
and read what other people have said about him is absolutely astounding the level of faith that Smith Wigglesworth had. He had so much faith that he scared people. He had so much faith that he shamed people. They didn't have, they didn't have nearly the faith. There was such an anointing on him that people on the train would get convicted of sin and ask for prayer without him even preaching to them. He walked in such a presence of God. And these stories are true. These aren't, uh, these aren't fables. And Dr. Summerall verified many of those stories. And on the last time Dr. Summerall and Smith Wigglesworth met in Smith's home, um, um, it was a tender moment. Uh, Wigglesworth had Summerall sit in a chair. Now, Lester Summerall was 21 years old at the time. Smith Wigglesworth came around behind him and laid his hands on his head, and he began to pray. And as he prayed... Tears rolled down Smith Wigglesworth's cheeks and dripped off of his chin onto Lester Summerall's forehead, and those tears ran down his forehead and dripped off of his chest onto, uh, chin onto his chest. And Wigglesworth said, God, let the spirit of faith that's upon me be upon this young man. Something was transferred at that moment. There was a divine impartation a heavenly transaction took place and an anointing, a gift of faith came upon Dr. Lester Summerall through the vessel of Smith Wigglesworth. Yes, we can transfer anointings. Yes, we can transfer faith to other people and gifts to other people. And that's for another lesson. But believe you me, you want to look for people who have something you like and you admire. And then when they pray, you'll get something too. Praise God. People used to get healed watching, uh, watching uh, Oral Roberts on television. He would say, touch the TV screen. And he would stretch his hands out and pray for them, and people get miracles through television. Well, if people got miracles through television, actually through the eternal Spirit of God, then we can get miracles right here on the Internet through the eternal Spirit of God, which is a lot better than the, than the Internet itself. <laughs> Amen? So you can receive a miracle and an impartation during this broadcast or broadcast like this, because I have something in my life to give, and something that didn't just come from me. It came from the greats who prayed for me. I received something. I have been blessed. Now, Dr. Summerall received this life-changing gift of faith, the spirit of faith from, from Smith Wigglesworth. And Dr. Summerall was my man of God. I was uh, ordained by him. I didn't know I was getting ordained by him. He just ordained me because he loved me. And he had me involved in his ministry and his television broadcast from time to time. And I preached for some of his great conferences. Uh, we preached overseas together. Uh, our paths crossed over and over and over in, in Germany and Hong Kong and the Philippines and Israel and different places. We, we would just cross paths because God had us on a similar track. And, and Dr. Summerall paid attention to divine connections like that. And uh, first time I prayed for him, he laid hands on me and it knocked me and four ushers to the ground. I'm not kidding you. Bam, it was something. I just shook. I wasn't expecting that and something went into me. All right, here's the point I'm making and then I'm going to get into the teaching. Let me let me check my time here. Yeah, I uh, spent a lot of time telling stories, but the stories are good, right? Jesus never taught without stories, without parables. And uh, I didn't realize how many stories I had until I did the 33 hours of broadcasting. And, and what are you going to talk about during 33 hours of live broadcasting? Well, the thing that came to my mind was all the adventures of faith that I've had and the uh, men and women of God. And so uh, uh, we did some teaching, but we shared a lot of our first person stories. And so, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Summerall laid hands on me. But behind Dr. Summerall was Smith Wigglesworth. You've heard about this six degree of separation. Well, I'm one degree away from Smith Wigglesworth. Here's Smith Wigglesworth. Here's Lester Summerall. And here's me. One, two, three. So Dr. Summerall received something from Smith Wigglesworth and passed something to me. So I believe I've got some of that residual anointing and blessing there from Wigglesworth. I really do believe that. And whoever prayed for Wigglesworth and so forth, this relay that goes all the way back to Jesus. Now, 
Remember this, Jesus prayed for us. Jesus prayed for you and Jesus' prayers always get answered. So it's one thing to have a, you know, a great man or woman of God pray for you. It's another thing to have Jesus pray for you. So the greatest men and women on earth are still flawed human vessels. Thank God for grace and mercy. But Jesus was perfect without flaw and his prayer is perfect and his faith effectual and his love unconditional. And he prayed for you. The greatest prayer warrior in the universe has prayed for you. The greatest intercessor has prayed for you and he ever liveth to make intercession for you right now, according to the will of God. The present day ministry of Jesus Christ is, yes, he's your advocate and your priest, but he's your intercessor. Praise God. He's still pleading on your behalf and he's still uh, listening to your prayers. He's the high priest of your profession or your confession Praise the Lord. He's helping you pray. When you pray here, he's petitioning his Father in heaven on your behalf. So of all the people on earth or in the universe or throughout history could pray for you, whose prayers would you value the most? Absolutely. Jesus. Isn't that a great thought? Jesus prayed for you. Still prays for you. Excuse me. Praise God. You may have noticed Mrs. Huggins isn't with me. She's up preparing for this event that we're going to. So uh, let's talk about Jesus and his prayers. Luke uh, 22, 32. Jesus said, I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith not fail. Well, at the crucifixion of Jesus, everybody's faith failed. They all left him. Even Peter cussed and denied that he knew Jesus. But uh, it didn't stay that way. On the day of Pentecost, he, he got his faith back and in spades. He's the first one to stand up and to preach under the anointing. These men are not drunken as ye suppose, but this is that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel. And when he got through preaching, 3,000 souls were saved. Praise God. That's because of the prayers that Jesus prayed for Peter. Hallelujah. And Jesus has prayed for you. Glory to God. Uh, John 17, 1, 26, Jesus said, I pray for them, that's you and, and me. He prayed for me and he prayed for you, that those who uh, you have given to me for they are yours. So Jesus said, I prayed for him. I pray for him. He prays for you and me. Jesus prayed and God spoke from heaven. And Jesus said, Father, glorify your name. And a voice came out of heaven and said, I have glorified it and I will yet glorify it. People heard it. Praise God. When Jesus prays, Heaven moves and the earth shakes. Hallelujah. And he prayed for you. And uh, one more scripture. Uh, this is where we're getting to with this. Back in December, I forecasted that this year there would be a restoration of singing in the spirit for congregations, not just individuals in their devotion time, but entire assemblies will be singing together in the spirit and singing with the understanding, and also uh, restoration of signs, wonders, and miracles, gifts of the Spirit. That's all part of the Pentecostal blessing that Peter was a part of. And that blessing continues today. It's never stopped. There's always been a remnant. remnant. There have always been people praying in tongues every generation. It never ceased. It never ceased. There was always someone, trust me, uh, I am a student of history, and there was always a remnant who prayed in tongues and spoke in tongues it may not have been a worldwide movement, but there, have, there has always been people who've enjoyed the Pentecostal blessing ever since the original outpouring at that first Pentecost where the church was born in an explosion of Holy Ghost power. And let me remind you, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, and that former house had amazing glory. Uh, there in the upper room, uh, they had the sound of a rushing wind. They had tongues of fire. They were all speaking in tongues. The place shook with the glory of God. And thousands and thousands of people began to be swept into the kingdom. So the glory of the latter house, perhaps that's the very house that you and I are part of, will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And if you think about the 20th century, Azusa Street was the apex. It, it was the milestone. It was a turning point for that modern outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I guess every Pentecostal denomination and independent church on the planet has 
has a debt to those saints at uh, Azusa Street who ushered in a mighty move of God that swept around the world. It was a move of God that had singing in the spirit, uh, singing with the understanding, gifts of the spirit, signs, wonders, and miracles. It was a mighty move of God, visible clouds of glory, the lightnings of God. I mean, the miracles just uh, go on and on and on, astounding miracles. And that's not too far ago. I, I, I've known people who were touched by directly by the saints of Azusa Street. So there's that one degree of separation again. In fact, many of those uh, original Azusa Street people were acquainted with Dr. Lester Summerall, and he was my mentor. So, you know, I have I have to give God glory for allowing me to be touched by those who were touched by the power of Azusa Street. And I believe that you have been touched by that same power and will be touched. And that's my forecast for this year is that we're going to see the beginnings of the restoration of signs, wonders, and miracles, uh, gifts of the Spirit, singing in the Spirit, and so forth. So I have 24 episodes, maybe more, we'll see what the Lord says, to share to prepare you and to get others ready for this outpouring so that God will use you in your local church or in the mission field or out in public, wherever he He leads you and guides you. You know, people were in the temple in, in the early days and went from house to house. And then there were things taking place just in the countryside and on the streets and in the city. So we're not limited to just the walls of the church. We can bless people in our own homes. We can bless people in the marketplace. We can bless people on the highways and byways. I've had many, many a meeting out in in just open fields and we would put up the sound system and the platform and oftentimes people had no shade and not even a place to sit. They sat on the ground, but tens of thousands of people uh, received the gospel and there were signs, wonders, and miracles without any amenities, without, with very few. I mean, we didn't even put up port, port toilets, porta potties or first aid stations, or water bottles, or any of that stuff. Just went out into the field and started preaching, and, and the meetings grew, and miracles happened. Praise the Lord. So we're not confined to just the walls of the church. I've preached on boats. I have preached in uh, factories. I've preached in bars, <laughs> former bars. I've preached in YMCAs, YWCAs, Elk uh, Lodges, uh, you know, Eastern Star Lodges, uh I'm trying to think of some of the places I've preached, Grange, Grahals, hotels, schools, auditoriums, under tents, under brush arbors. You probably don't know what those are. It's just a shade made out of brush uh, up on poles to kind of keep the the sun off of people and, and the dew off of them in the evening. I've preached open air crusades. Many of them I've preached in soccer stadiums. I've preached in baseball fields. I've preached in, you name it, you name it. I even preached in a worm farm. They got rid of the worms and brought in chairs. <laughs> we had a Holy Ghost meeting. Praise God. So God may use you anywhere and everywhere. And once you get fired up with the Holy Ghost, there's no telling what will come out of you and when God will choose to bring it out of you. And remember, Jesus has prayed for you. And he's prayed. Here's a prayer he prayed. And this is my point. I'm going to have to close here. He prayed for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we're talking about. John 14, 16, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Forever means forever. Jesus prayed for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life. Jesus prayed for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on this earth. Jesus is behind the move of the Spirit. Praise God. He's the one who went to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit our way. And there will be no move of the Spirit without the ministry of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus himself initiated. He's behind it all. All power in heaven and earth is given into him, and he has prayed for you. Now listen, I got kind of fired up here in, in teaching, but I could do this for hours. I am so excited about what God is getting ready to do for you in your life. Things are getting ready to happen. And I believe if you continue to get stay hooked up with the Holy Ghost, of course, that, that's a given. That's not going to change. But if you'll stay hooked up with me, 
I'll help you. I'll help prepare you. I'll do whatever the Lord gives me to do to edify you, to build you up, to encourage you, and to help you be positioned and prepared for the coming move of the Spirit that's going to impact you and your family and loved ones and your community and our world. Hallelujah. I'm actually in Barcelona, Spain, but that's irrelevant. It doesn't make any difference. Paul said, I'm absent in the body, but I'm with you in spirit, beholding your order and steadfastness. So I'm with you in the spirit. I hope you can feel the contact. And I am I pray for all of my partners every day. In fact, my wife and I pray twice a day. Uh, when the morning when we get up, we we pray for our partners and and everyone in our ministry, everyone in our life really are friends. And we go through the whole thing of what God is doing, but we focus on the blessings of our partners. Remember, he who receives a prophet because he is a prophet gets the prophet's rewards. And you've got my prayers, and I hope that means something to you. In fact, you become my partner in addition to all the other benefits that you get, webinars and seminars and printed materials and, and access to to my time and so forth, I will handwrite your name in my prophet's prayer book and call your name. I've got a padlock on it right there, and this goes with me. If I go to Germany, this goes with me. If I go to England, this goes with me. If I go to the United States, this goes with me. Hallelujah. Get your name. You got your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Why don't I just add your name to my prophet's prayer book and and you'll be a recipient of my prayers. And then we, my wife and I, pray in the evening. And it's not just prayers we make. We start making uh, decrees and declarations and affirmations. We start speaking things into the lives of our partners. So if you're not already a partner, I encourage you to be one because I'm getting folks ready uh, to flow in the Holy Ghost. I've got over 45 years of experience of full-time international miracle ministry. Yep, miracle ministry. I would not have had an evangelistic ministry had, had it not been for the miracle power of God. I am here to testify that every crusade I've ever held started with miracles and had miracles all the way to the closing of the crusade when we fed people into churches and got them going uh, with God. So started with miracles all the way through. Mighty miracles, amazing miracles. We, I, I have been blessed and there must be some spirit of faith on me. Uh, thank God for the greats who've laid their hands on me and anointed me and I want to do the same. I want to take that Jesus anointing, Wigglesworth anointing, Summerall anointing, my anointing and bless others. Praise God. I hope that means something to you. Uh, if I didn't feel like I was blessing people, I would not trouble myself with doing these broadcasts every week. I, there are plenty of other things I can do, but I'm doing this as a labor of love because I, I love people and I love Jesus and I want to connect people with Jesus. Praise God. All right. Actually, uh, we've been going uh, exactly 40 minutes here. I don't like to go over 45 minutes, never go over an hour, uh, but I, I do want us to have communion. And um, I can't lay my hands on you over the internet, obviously, but we can do this. We can celebrate the, uh, the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is probably the best way to convey the anointing to people. It's one thing to lay hands on people and let that anointing penetrate them. The laying on of hands is a fundamental doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And he, he gave us the ministry of laying on of hands. And he did the same. He didn't always lay hands on everyone, but he did lay hands on some, and that's our example. And we do a lot of that in, in full gospel Pentecostal charismatic circles, a lot of laying on of hands. But another way to effectively minister the anointing and the power of God is through communion. If we do this right, something's going to get into this juice that you have and something's going to get into that bread that you have. And then when you take partake of it, it's going to get into you and bless you from the inside out. Laying on of hands blesses you from the outside in. Communion blesses you from the inside out. So this is a way to, to take into your person uh, intimately 
and uh, thoroughly a blessing that's concentrated in these elements. I believe that. I believe these are vehicles, carriers of the anointing. I believe these are carriers of Holy Ghost power and Pentecost power. The, uh, the glory manifest over the blood. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit hovers over the blood. The Spirit and the blood agree. They're in unison. They're working together. The Spirit and the blood. Uh, the life of all flesh is in the blood. Flesh is in the blood, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Brother Larry, do you believe in transubstantiation? Kind of. I don't know if it happens in the cup, but when you drink it, it happens inside of you. Something is transformed. Something changes states. I believe that. That's why I pray, pray very sincerely. I'm going to pray a brief but sincere prayer. So take your elements in your hand. If you don't have them, well, just uh, agree with me in your heart and thank God for the body and the blood of the Lord. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So uh, I'll, I'll just say like all Roberts, reach out and, and touch your computer there as a point of contact. And while we're praying, you'll get a blessing too. God's getting a blessing to you. He's got so many ways of blessing you. And Jesus is interceding on your behalf. So here you have Jesus praying for you. Uh, Dr. Summerall praying for you, Smith Wigglesworth praying for you, me praying for you, all my, all my, uh, mentors and upline people praying for you. I'm, I'm just going to try to let all that anointing that's in my life that God has been putting into me for over 50 years uh, come your way. You ready? Father, I thank you for the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit hover over these emblems right now and endow these emblems with Holy Ghost power. If the anointing can be in Jesus' tears and saliva, in the hem of his garment, it can be in this morsel of bread. If the anointing could be in handkerchiefs and aprons that were taken from Paul's body and delivered to the sick and they were healed and evil spirits left them, then the anointing can be in this element right here. And I thank you for irradiating both of these elements with the gamma goodness, Holy Ghost rays of God, penetrate, permeate, saturate, satiate, irradiate, anoint this bread and this cup. Let this cup be radioactive with the life and miracle power of God. Right now, bless everyone to receive the radioactive, glorious, uh, Holy Ghost miracle resuscitating resurrection power of God into their person. And when they receive the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, something's going to be released inside of them that's going to affect every member of their body, spirit, soul, and body, every molecule of their being, including their thoughts and feelings. Father, I thank you that the anointing is being released into my friends and partners today. It's a great way to begin the day or to end the day in Jesus' name. The body of the Lord. Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body that was broken for you, so you don't have to be broken. As often as you do this, remember everything I've done for you. Remember I prayed for you in Jesus' name. Pardon me. Likewise, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. New Testament. New Testament. There was no Jesus' blood for the Old Testament. They had the blood of bulls, lambs, animals. But Jesus is our lamb, the Passover lamb. And his blood was precious, pure, holy, pristine, perfect. And he shed that blood for you and me so that we could be whole, forgiven, washed, cleansed, and empowered. And remember, the Spirit and the blood agree. The Holy Spirit always hovers over the blood. And so as you drink this, the Holy Spirit's going to hover over you right where you are and endow you with Holy Ghost power and the gift of faith and the spirit of faith. In the name, authority, character, integrity, honor, and power of Jesus, I present unto you the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's partake of his life. Oh, the blood. 
of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Amen. I always sing that chorus, and I'll tell you why. As you know from listening to me, that one of my heroes uh, is Dr. Lester Summerall, who's changed his address to heaven. Praise God, he's in that cloud of witnesses right now, cheering me on and cheering us on. But that little chorus, Oh, the Blood of Jesus, has been sung around the world. I go around the world, I sing it, and uh, others sing it, congregations sing it. I don't know if you've ever heard it before, but it, it has been sung by many, many people. Oh, the blood of Jesus. You may not know this, the origin of that song, but the Holy Spirit released that song to Lester Summerall years and years ago when he was in some meetings in China. You didn't know that, did you? You didn't know. Well, Dr. Lester Summerall, like me, wasn't a singer. He wasn't known for his singing. He had a, you've heard of karaoke. Well, I've got a croaky voice and, and he wasn't known as a singer either, but that makes no difference. Uh, the Holy Spirit downloaded this song into his spirit and went over and over and over. And he returned from China and he met a friend of his in Los Angeles who's a, a musician and a pianist. And, he, and Dr. Summerall said, I've, I've got this song in my spirit. And, and he said, let me, let me give you what I've got and see if you can kind of fix it. And so this fellow sort of arranged it for it and worked out, worked out a few of the little rough places. And that's what it became, it became what I just shared with you, and it went all over the world in other languages. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Uh, I've got a certain way of ministering in the Holy Ghost and a certain repertoire of music that I, that I like that prepares an atmosphere for miracles. And today, a lot of the young people don't know anything about, uh, about, you know, psalmistry, about being a real psalmist and working with a real prophet. They just haven't been taught. They're intelligent. They just, no orientation there. And so I'm finding it more and more difficult to find people who know how to flow in the Holy Ghost. They're, they're kind of restricted to their own, uh, song list. And sometimes those songs, as good as they are, aren't appropriate for the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the prophet. So uh, many times I have a conversation and, and when I find out that, uh, you know, they're limited in their repertoire, I say, just sing songs about the blood of Jesus. Would you do that for me? Just, just sing songs about the blood of Jesus. You can't go wrong singing songs about the blood of Jesus. And I said, the Holy Spirit will start to move and we'll see some miracles here. If you'll just Sing some songs about the blood of Jesus and just stay with it. Just sing them over and over until we're done here. And as long as you sing about the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will keep moving and blessing and we'll see miracles. And that's my advice to them is you can't go wrong singing songs about the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for allowing me to come into your life and touch you. And, and um, just thanks for being you and thanks for being in touch. And go ahead and leave some comments and I will read all the comments later and uh, and respond to uh, as many of them as I can. So God bless you and have a, a wonderful time. Tell your friends about My Prophet's House, Ambassador Larry Huggins, the Prophet of Grace. Amen. That's my title, my job description, really. I'm not big on titles, but it is my job description. And uh, uh, send them our way. The, the more, the better. We want to bless as many people as we can and help prepare them for the coming fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. All righty.